Well, here we are, the beginning of our 419 mile journey yes. on the Dalton Highway, full of gravel, <laughs> dirt, potholes, and who knows what else we'll find. But before we get into that and what we're up to, let us get you caught up on how we got here. Yeah. Off the ferries from Glacier Bay in our last video, we were happy that the route back along the Klondike Highway was more clear than our trip into Skagway. This said, there was still some occasional cloud cover that obscured some of the brilliant greens the pools of water often reflect. Still, it's an absolutely breathtaking drive. Once through British Columbia and into the Yukon Territory, some smoke from the BC fires caught up to us. At first, it came and went and barely impacted us or our amazing campsite views. But as we made our way closer to Alaska, the Fairbanks fires caused extremely low visibility. Well, this really was an amazing campsite here. Um, it's really nice. There's a bridge like just behind that tree that you can't see. The river's wide. You can maybe make out the tops of the trees. Uh, this is not fog. This is actually smoke that moved in on us on this low elevation. And as much as Alana and I, uh, as much as we absolutely love barbecue and smoked meat, we would prefer it if we were not that meat. So, uh, we're getting up out of here. Well, there you go. Some ups, some downs, some smoke and everything <laughs> in between. It really has still been fun. Yes. Uh, we do hope some of that smoke is cleared at least a little bit Hopefully. Uh, as we make our way back, back south. But for now, we are going to head all the way out to the end to yep. Prudhoe Bay. We're gonna try to do a dip in the uh, Arctic. Maybe. And then uh, we're gonna hit up the gates of the Arctic National Park on yes. our way back down. So join us. We weren't on the Dalton for very long before the smoke made a significant presence again. Beyond blocking some views, it didn't really impact us. However, it seemed to have most of the wildlife unwilling to venture out and into view. Before filling up in Coldfoot, we stopped at the Arctic Interagency Visitor Center. This is the only visitor center for the gates of the Arctic National Park along the Dalton. Our stop included getting some stickers, checking in to advise of our itinerary, and completing the backcountry orientation. It wasn't too far down the road before we stopped at several spots to scout our path across the river and towards the park which we would take after visiting Dead Horse and Prudhoe Bay. As we made our way over the Candelar Shelf, the low visibility from smoke became the least of our concerns as some of the thickest fog we have ever experienced descended upon us. There were times we weren't able to see the opposite road edge and we had to rely heavily on the delineators to ensure we were clear from the invisible oncoming trucks. Well, hello for this intermission from the future. We had some technical difficulties when I lost my laptop and transferring to uh, the new computer. I was able to recover most of the files or at least patch them up for this video, but this one about the Dalton Highway we lost. So we thought we'd re-record a, a lot of what we said there. Yeah. 
the Dalton Highway is 420 miles, most of which is dirt. There is pavement, about 25% of it. Now, if that portion is the parts you're excited about, don't be. We actually found that to be the harshest sections of road. While potholes are throughout, both pavement and in dirt, yes. the potholes in the asphalt just had a really rough edge on the yeah. beginning and on the tail end, like the blow your tire yes. out kind yes. of roughness. But beyond those potholes, a tremendous amount of frost heave and buckling had occurred due to the temperature ranges yeah. of the area. When we traveled there in mid-August, yep. we found the dirt sections to really be exceptionally smooth. That being said, yep. you will be sandblasting the bottom of your car and you need to stay <laughs> attentive all of the time yep. when you're on it. Keep in mind this road, while open since, when was it, 70? 19, 19, well, it's been open since 1979. 94, it was open to the public. Yeah, but it's still... Its primary purpose is a haul road, yes. and the truckers there have a lot of work to do, and that means you need to be aware of their presence, make sure you're not taking up more space, give them their time to go by, yep. do all those kind of things. But that just means it's not made for the creature comforts that you'll find on the other roads. We still really enjoyed our time yep. on the road. It was beautiful, even though we didn't have, we had smoke and some other things. Uh, we highly encourage your trip yes. on that road. Anyway, back to the video. No, it's not. That, that, that doesn't count. That does. No, it doesn't. That you got to get over the ankles. Oh. You got to get over the ankles. Unfortunately, there is no public access to the Arctic Ocean, at least not from Prudhoe Bay. Because the area is under lease for oil drilling and the immense security required for that, you can only reach the shore by a guided shuttle which leaves from Dead Horse Camp. Our guide and time was enjoyable, but this was a bit of an expensive wade on a beach. If it isn't important for you to see or get into the ocean, we recommend a pass on this. With the very low visibility on our way in, we were happy the fog had moved out or at least to other areas as we made our way south from Prudhoe Bay. Caribou, grizzlies, and musk oxen were all a part of the wildlife views within the amazing landscape. stopped at a pretty spectacular campsite last night. Uh, a little breezy. We made it to the other side of the mountain ridge. What's the mountain ridge, babe? Candelar the Candelar Shelf. It was about uh, 12 degrees warmer just by doing that, but then uh, we woke up. The fog has finally lifted, as well as a lot of the smoke has moved out from the area. Now that's really exciting for us because we now are going to backpack into the Gates of the Arctic just a few miles down the road and make our camp tonight to check off another national park. Here's where Wilma is going to live while we go to make our uh, our hike. We're just about ready to leave. We've got to cross the river here. We think there's going to be probably one of the best spots where it's uh, really braided out right here. We're hoping to find a good spot where we don't get uh, much more than uh, knee deep. And then we've got to go up in there. That uh, the, the peaks there marks the border of Gate to the Ar Gates to the Arctic National Park. So we're going to try to walk up that valley.
Even with all of our scouting for the best crossing we could find, the river still had some deep sections that when combined with the speed of the water required our full focus. This means the cameras were put away until Jay was confident with his footing. You got it, babe. That's it, nice and slow. After a sock swap and gravel dump from our shoes, we started the trek into the park. Gates of the Arctic has no roads or maintained trails. It is 8.4 million acres of raw and wild land. To experience it, you can charter a bush or float plane, float in on a pack raft, or hike in as we did. Hike was a mix of brush, forest, gravel bars, and many water crossings. While there are no maintained trails, you can find social trails. These are paths used by all the critters in the area, but it's the large game that leaves the most evidence with their massive prints. We enjoyed the easier walking along these paths, but were more bear aware and noisy when using them to make our presence well known. Well, we're in the gates of the Arctic. We are in the gates of the Arctic. I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> there's not a lot to see. So now it's just a matter of uh, now it's it's how uh, far do we want to go? How far do we want to go? Where we want to camp? But uh, we are now we've crossed the border. We're here. Yep. Well, here's the deal. We have made it to where we had planned on camping uh, tonight. We actually are just a little bit downstream. We mm -hmm. had a nice dinner. We went ahead and cooked, and then we were gonna move just a little bit upstream to some sandbars yep. where we had planned on camping. But we actually got here a lot faster than we had anticipated. And there isn't a good way without several more really deep stream crossings, river crossings, whatever this is, uh, to make our way further upriver. Right. And with the days going to 11 o'clock with still very good light, we decided to make this a heavily packed day hike, <laughs> hike back out, and that's gonna allow us to move yes. back down the road a little bit more because yeah. we were a little pinched for time tomorrow with our plans. Yes. So we're gonna turn around and hike back. We are well aware that our visit to the gates of the Arctic National Park was little more than a scratch of the surface. Given its immense geography, it would take more time than we allotted for our entire trip to truly do it justice. We may visit again someday for pack rafting, but for now, we are considering this bucket lister done.
You might think that the trip out would be boring having already seen everything, but it was actually far from it. Remember, the smoke blocked most of our view on the way in, so much of this was our first real view of the areas surrounding this amazing highway. Well, there it all is, the Dalton <laughs> Highway and gates of the Arctic National Park, or at least our visit of it. Now, as you can see, we've now moved back in. We're yep. in Fairbanks. We have just rolled the odometer over since we left home, just over 5,000 yep. miles, which means it's time for Wilma to get an oil change. We've stopped here in Fairbanks to get an oil change for her. Uh, we did some laundry, we've yep. got some grocery shopping, filled up our propane tank, our water, all those kind of things, so we are ready to hit the road again. Final thoughts on the Dalton Highway or anything with that? Oof, boy, it's bumpy. <laughs> and it's the pavement that's the worst, not the dirt, or at least in most cases. Yes. Uh, one note I'll add is really the entirety of the Dalton Highway yes. is pack in, pack out. And I mean yes. everything pack in, pack out. So for us, we feel like you really need at least a four day trip. Uh, mileage wise, you might think you're gonna take on that 420 miles. It's just, you're gonna move a lot slower. You're yes. going to want to move a lot slower. Yes. Stop for the scenery and things yeah. like that. So for us, it was five nights, six days uh, that we ended up spending for the entirety of the yep. trip with the stop. And that means all of our trash, everything that we carried in, we have carried back out to dispose of here in Fairbanks. Yep. So now we've got a fresh restart. We are on to uh, Denali. Denali National Park. We hope to see you there. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.